TBS News, I'm Rosine Park. South Korea's daily coronavirus caseload neared 1,600 as testing picked up again after a lull over the weekend. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency confirmed 1,597 new cases in the last 24 hours, raising the cumulative total to 263,374. Three additional COVID-related deaths pushed up the death toll to 2,330. The KDCA said 66 percent of the latest locally transmitted cases were from the Seoul metropolitan area, where cluster infections have been steadily rising with people returning from their summer vacation and the reopening of schools. Health authorities remain cautious as cases could spread across the nation during the Chuseok fall harvest holiday set for September 20th through the 22nd. Second Vice Health Minister Kang Dok Tae urged people to continue to take precautions and follow antivirus curbs. He said if people lower their guard and the virus resurges, the goal of recovering back to normal can be threatened. The government has indicated it plans to adopt a new strategy amid the pandemic that involves learning to live with COVID-19. In the meantime, the country is encouraging everyone to get vaccinated to help contain the spread of the virus. Due to a slower-than-expected vaccine rollout, however, less than 60 percent of the South Korean population had received one shot as of Monday, and less than 36 percent were fully vaccinated. The Seoul city government is launching a campaign to encourage foreigners residing in the capital to get vaccinated against COVID as soon as they become eligible. Local health officials said they are also promoting free preemptive coronavirus testing in line with the increasing proportion of foreigners infected with the virus. As of the end of August, foreigners accounted for 9.2 percent of all coronavirus cases recorded in Seoul since the start of the pandemic. According to the city government, the vaccination rate among foreign nationals has been low due to language barriers and the complex registration process. Prime Minister Kim Bu Yum has urged unionized subway workers in Seoul not to go on strike next week, saying it will inconvenience people ahead of the Chuseok holiday. The Labor Union of Seoul Metro, the operator of the subway system in the capital region, warned it will go on strike on September 14th if authorities plan to lay off workers as part of their restructuring measures is not withdrawn. Kim said the pandemic is already making life difficult for many people and called on the union to cancel their protests. The Prime Minister also mentioned the Afghan evacuees who arrived in the country at the end of last month, saying he hopes they will settle in the country well. He called on government ministries and agencies to work together to support the evacuees with housing, jobs and education. In other news, the United States says it has successfully evacuated four of its citizens over land from Afghanistan in the first such operation since the American airlift ended. The BBC's Gary O'Donoghue reports from Washington. We know there are four individuals that travelled overland. That was facilitated by the State Department. They say the, the Taliban was aware of that and didn't impede their progress. Although we do know that they were met by the American embassy officials in, in whichever country they arrived in, so they won't be Iran because they don't have an embassy in Iran. There is a, a Republican a member of Congress here who's saying that he was part of a facilitation exercise to get a family out of a mother and three children. And the State Department, Department haven't confirmed that that's the same four people they're talking about. That's all the news for now. You're listening to TBS EFM.